All right, welcome boils and ghouls to the inaugural episode of Off the Beaten Rack. This is kind of a companion piece to um, page turners, but it is focusing on books that are not put out by DC Comics, not put out by Image Comics, not put out by Marvel Comics, Dark Horse Comics, um, those kind of stuff. I might talk about some Image stuff, maybe some Dark Horse stuff. I really like creator-owned properties. The ideas behind those companies are great, but um, I just want this to be a spotlight on some cool stuff that you might not be seeing because like even if you do get the previews uh those massive previews tomes like stuff like this just gets buried and it's really hard to find it this was recommended to me um i'm gonna be throwing a couple of stones at this as we move along because of that i want to start this out by saying i absolutely fucking adore this magazine it was recommended to me a few months ago, and this is the first issue that's come out since it was recommended. They are going from, I believe, quarterly to bi-monthly. I'm going to be on this like white on rice from now on. Let me tell you that from the very beginning. Like These guys pay immaculate attention to detail. Uh, Rich Sala, the editor on this, woo! Like, this is not just trying to ape a Warren magazine. These guys are literally trying to be a Warren magazine. Uh, that is a really cool thing. Also one of my gripes, we'll talk about that. First off, paper stock. These guys, holy shit. So Warren Originals, Frank Rosetta, Nicola Cudi, or Cuddy, I don't know. Dan Glut, um, you can tell right here. They're like guys, and this is one of the reasons this magazine was recommended to me. They were like, these guys went and they found guys who were still alive, and still working, still available from the Warren mags. They hired them and I was like, hey, that's cool. I'll check it out just on that. And the cover of this feels very reminiscent of like the magazines when I was growing up. It doesn't feel quite like they do now. Like there's a difference in cardstock. I really like it. We get on to the very first page and already, bam. Like these guys, I knew they were like, these. they're, they're not just casual fans. These guys pay real attention to stuff because they, instead of having an ad on the inside cover, they have a self-contained one page story that reinforces the supposed theme that's not very well held out throughout the rest of the issue, which is cannibals. So they talk about cannibals throughout history, uh, female cannibals in particular. The paper stock for the actual issue is, if I am not mistaken, actual newspaper stock. Like, um, it smells like newspaper, it feels like newspaper, and these markings right here are very indicative. It doesn't have the perforation, but those are very indicative of actual newspaper print which means that uh i guess maybe this magazine might not uh, if you're rough with it might not hand it, like hold up as well but the art is created to uh, let's put that kindly emulate the ec and warren magazine stuff and this paper stock does a huge job of reinforcing and making it not only look more appropriate, but serving the actual template and feel of the magazine very well. The We start off with the uh, two-page spread of letters. These guys seem to be uh, getting a good amount of letters. They uh, talk about... It, the only thing is that there's only like one response, and I wish there was more response, but there was more information. Somebody asks about them doing another magazine, and they say they don't have any plans of it. I wish they did. I will point out the reason for that as we move along. The information is actually more from fans, and you learn about the magazine more from the fans than this one single response. That's kind of weird, but it also shows that the fans of this magazine are 
very interactive. That's because they have a, uh, a fan club and they have got a good enough fan base that they can run a double page spread of guys who are very, very into what they're doing. So moving on from there, we start off with a 1930s. I, um, okay, let me say I am a sucker for pre cheese. Like I, I, I they, it's not even that they just hold a soft spot for me. Basically, they can be awful, and I can still get a lot of enjoyment out of them. I like a lot of the castrated DC pre cheese and stuff. I like basically any of them. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, cool, pre uh, There's a female gunman. This like chauvinistic male gunman is like, uh, they both work for the same crime boss, and he's like a wannabe hitman. She's the top, you know, top hitman, except she's a dame. He doesn't like that, so he's going to take her out. He uh, follows her to this hit, and then he follows her like back home. He's gonna take her out, but it turns out she's a vampire. Like she bites him, but he ends up staking her, and he becomes a vampire and takes over her job. So like right there, I was like, e okay, well nope, threw that preachy right out the window because at the end, you know, like he would have gotten his comeuppance for being a chauvinist piece of shit. And she probably would have gotten comeuppance for being like a vampiric hitman. I don't know who would have got, you know, come out on top, but this felt like it was cool. It was a play on preachy, but it wasn't a preachy. It was super well. The art was really cool. And again, um, the newspaper print does a very good job of like reinforcing the feel and the aesthetic of that old art. The attention to detail goes down to even the advertising. Obviously, as a horror you know, magazine, you're gonna have more horror guys who wanna advertise with you, but they keep it to only horror-related stuff, mostly magazines, and Frank Frazetta stuff. I assume the fact that like there are, I believe, four Frazetta ads, and then an entire back cover ad for Frazetta, is perhaps how they got a bit of a deal on this wonderful Frazetta cover. Hey, you want it like half of our ad space? So the yeah, oh yeah, here we go. Number one, let's let's count the Frazetta ads. Number one, ah ah ah. But seriously, I love Frazetta. This is seriously uh, awesome stuff. It's cool, whatever. So. This one, uh, The Mummy, this one's awesome. Santos Zabalos is the artist on this. I hope I'm saying his name, I'm not. And uh, Lou Mugen, also probably not saying his name right. Uh, this was awesome. Great story. Uh, the My only complaint with this story was that when I started it off, I am dyslexic and dysgraphic severely, so perhaps it was that but these first dialogue bubbles whew, that was it was very i had to read that like three or four times to be like who the wait what is the order of the shit they are saying and how does this all fit together what the fuck is this conversation about and like basically thutmose this like dickhead is uh killing a slave who's building his pyramid for no reason to like make the other slaves work harder so that they won't have to kill as many slaves and his vizier is like dude that seems kind of like dickish and he's like yeah well you know remember i only need you for the potion of passage and basically i only need your brain for that so we can find out how much of your body i don't need if you would like or you can shut up and he's like i will shut up and uh, uh, like right after that, uh, Thutmose dies, and uh, the vizier does give him the post the potion of passage, which is supposed to bring him back in like a millennia. But then they kill all these like slaves, and they did do that. They killed slaves to put them with the uh, pharaohs in Egypt. Thutmose is gaining power, and finally his body is like resurrected and he lives again but it turns out that his vizier was one of the slaves that they killed and so they impale each other and they both like die on the ground it would have been cool if like maybe 
uh, oh, and these archaeologists find them. Uh, it's kind of unclear. Maybe archaeologists, like, uh, breaking the seal of a tomb is what allows them to awaken, but it, whatever. This was really cool. Uh, again, didn't play on the preachy thing, because I was like, okay, he's going to get the drop on Thutmose. These archaeologists are going to come. And he'll, like, you know, have passed back into slumber or, like, just died because his purpose has been served or whatever. But, like, no, they just kill each other. It's so, like, wow, that's more straight-out horror. This magazine is totally fucking cool. But they are trying to be a Warren magazine so hard. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to take them completely seriously they would be well served in my opinion to develop a bit more of their own per and i know like this is a a warrant publication like it's a warrant magazine it's a warren magazine like i get it i know i love that stuff too but like you are doing this so well like update it just a little bit step out of the box you guys obviously know what you're doing and I really want to see where you would go with this. We've had like this mummy story, which spans from like, you know, ancient Egypt. We've had a story from the thirties and then we move in and we've got this jungle adventure. So I'm like, okay, cool. So we're in the fifties now. And there are like these two adventurers who are out and they find this other dead adventurer who's being eaten by like a, uh, a jaguar. And they're like, find uh, his phone, and it has information about this tribe who worship. Like, and it's it's very obvious, like it's supposed to be the Gill Man, but it's kind of a funny play because the Gill Man looks like Abe Sapien, and I believe that that's probably like a not so subtle nod to the fact that like Guillermo del Toro, who directed Hellboy, uh, the comic that Abe Sapien is from, also did. The Shape of Water, which was basically like he was that was going to be his creature from the Black Lagoon for the um, Universal Dark Universe or whatever. And they were like, yeah, OK, cool. Wait a minute. Does she fuck the fish? Does that say she fucks the fish? No, get out. Go away. Go away, Guillermo del Toro. And like this is super fun. So like that's your first nod to like Shape of Water and Guillermo del Toro, Abe Sapien, Hellboy thing. So there's a, the swindling dickhead guy who's out for money is the brother of the dead adventurer. And he knows about the tribe who worship the Gill Man. This statue is, is gold apparently. So he's like, they bring it. He also knows that they bring him like gifts. And so he's like, yeah, we're gonna go and I need some help swindling these dudes out of all of their stuff. So he hires this out of work, uh, practical effects makeup dude from Hollywood, who's like getting booted for a bunch of CGI work. And that was when I was like, oh, sh wait a minute, this is not the 50s. And then I noticed like he's on a cell phone and like they pull a cell phone off of the dead body of this adventurer. They're like, like oh, here's his cell phone. And like, uh, I'm almost like, oh, wait cool update weird so like the they go and the like swindling dickhead dresses up as the uh the gill man and he's got the makeup guy there to like provide like smoke special effects and stuff but it turns out that the local tribe only brings fish and that the gill man is obviously real and you're like, ooh, that's probably not good. So they kill the special effects makeup artist dude that's there. You're like, eek, kind of harsh. He didn't really do anything. I guess he did try to swim on it, whatever. But it was like, eh, okay. And then, like, the gill chick shows up. And you're like, oh, what? Cool, nice play. And she, like, carries off the dude in the suit. Because he can't get the suit off. The seams are, like, impossible to take off, which is fairly real like he might have been able to get part of it off i guess but she's like yeah no we're gonna go bang and like again that was the huge joke from shape of what i or plot point joke i don't know whatever you want to call it from shape of water so like 
I, I like I was laughing at that. Um, oh, yep, another Frazetta ad. What's that? Two, I think. Yeah, it's two. Then we have this uh, zombie at Mardi Gras story. This probably actually would have been the best story in here if I didn't dislike the last panel. So like. We've got these Canadians that show up to Mardi Gras. They're shooting this documentary and the local sheriff is acting all shifty. He's like, hey, don't you guys go poking around. Or I guess it's like Bayou Talks. He's like, whatever. Not going to do a Cajun accent. So he's like, don't go poking around, you know. Stay on the stay on the beaten path. And they're like, oh, well, now we have to go poke around. Instanta like Instantly, they hear locals talking about how dead people come to Mardi Gras, and you're like, okay. And they just take them at the word, and they go straight to the cemetery, and they still, they film the cemetery all night, right where the guys said that like this dude's name is gonna come or whatever to the Mardi Gras. So they go there, and they film, and zombies show up. And they're like, oh, okay. And, uh, the zombies go and they start eating a couple of people in the crowd, but the sheriff rounds them up real quick and him and his deputies like blow off their head. And it turns out that it's this like whole cemetery man, Dylan dog type situation where like they know that the zombies rise. So they have like a list of people who are gonna come and they keep an eye out for them. And they just cap them. And you're like, oh, okay, well, cool. And then there's another sort like like swarm of zombies and they're like, oh crap, like our list was off this year. So they go to shoot them, but it doesn't work because they're vampires. And I thought at first it's like, oh, this is really cool because it turns out that the documentary crew is actually vampires. And like now that they know that like there are zombies here, they're gonna like kill the sheriffs and take over and like they're gonna do the whole like th whatever and like the third or fourth time I read this issue, I noticed that like right here is the female reporter and there's the male reporter. And that those are just like random dudes that just randomly show up. And I was like, ah, damn it. Like that ending would have been way better. But like, that's just like little nitpicky bullshit. Awesome. Um, here's an ad for the fan club. I might actually join this if I get a little bit of uh, change saved up. This is really cool. Um, the this is like the apparently the first ep issue that this is in, but this is a page where like if you're a member of the fan club, I think they do take uh, unsolicited stuff, but like uh, fan club members get the first crack at being published. If they like it, they publish it. There's this awesome Rondo Hatton painting by uh, Steve Gale, and from the Brute Man. I am a huge fan of Rondo Hatton, and that is dead on, man. Like, I'm gonna have to check out this dude and see what else he does, because that is sick. There's a short story up here. The I don't like the tense that this is written in. Uh, I, I'm just not a big fan of it, but the actual story, the content of it, the writing, the execution, the length, the amount of interest it held was f fucking impressive as hell to say the least i it, it's about a hitchhiker who gets hit by a car it is awesome freaking cool we come into a uh, second to last story here one of the strongest stories uh don glut is um writer on this and i should say that um the name i had to look it up because i started being getting a little bit suspicious after a while uh already goodwin shows up as a writer a lot and the writing was just like so weird yeah Artie Godwin, that's what it is. Not Goodwin, Godwin. That is a pen name. I don't like pen names. If you want to write on a pseudonym, that's cool, but this seems like a couple people writing under one name, and I don't like that. I like to be able to check out, like, 
hey, like, I like Dan Glutt's stuff, so I want to go check out his stuff. And, like, Artie Godwin, like, it ditch the pen name or get a actual pen name for each person ditch that crap in my opinion like i want to be able to say like hey dan glut wrote this awesome cannibal story uh second course and it's like starts off and i was like oh, okay a sword and sorcery kind of thing because it's like post-apocalyptic world nuke nuke is dropped the only food source left on the planet is people and so they like hunt down this dude uh and they eat this dude but then like right here we have like a spaceship and a space dude shows up and i'm like oh what spaceman throwing that right into the like caveman type deal with the post the pot all right clever and they kind of play like you're like okay he's going to be the peaceful dude he's exploring and then they're going to be all crazy and they do they beat him to death and they eat him and you're like damn dude okay like the uh his buddies show up uh the spaceman's buddies show up and they're like hey i wonder what happened to marvin or whatever you know and uh they're like now they're gonna get pissed and like kill the humans or whatever uh they're gonna try to like reason with them or whatever but then they're gonna get angry when they find out they killed them and it's like they see the dude the humans one time and they all just blast them and like the last uh the last panel is the uh, humans getting eaten by the aliens because the aliens have depleted their own world of all like food and resources and it turns out like they were looking for a planet with an abundant food source and people will do just fine it was really cool man i really liked it like the the fact that it doesn't do the whole preachy like has to follow certain uh comeuppance rules is really cool it's one of the reasons i think that this magazine would be very well suited to actually developing a bit more of its own personality this is really cool too you can get uh covers uh cover post uh poster covers of like basically i think like all of their stuff like four bucks with like f for and four bucks shipping super cheap last story um ah, man it sucks like this is a really cool idea and the art and layout is probably the the most faithful to the old ec comics like even the layout like up here is just the best done emulation this story needed about two or three two or four more pages like it, it just didn't it didn't have time to develop enough even for truncated stuff and it sucks this is a great story uh called the scarecrow man the local uh scarecrow maker like doesn't make enough money at his job because he likes to bang expensive hookers so he for whatever reason has access to this drug that he can give people that makes it look like they have heart attacks and then he steals all their money and crap and he goes and he spends it on hookers so this rich chick shows up at the hotel where he lives she checks into the room next door people are like hey didn't your dad get hanged because he was like a demonic like worshiper like or you know like a demon worshiper like a crazy satanist and she's like yeah but i didn't really like my dad i just inherited all of his money the scarecrow guy the scarecrow maker shows up he whacks her with the um like heart drug and steals her stuff they bury her it turns out that being a witch or demonic or whatever is hereditary she rises up from the grave and she kills the local scarecrow the scarecrow guy and her and her zombie buddies like turn him into this like grotesque zombie a uh, uh, zombie scarecrow well i guess he's not a zombie but like a grotesque gory scarecrow parody in the middle of town and it is an awesome like it follows the preachy rules it um looks the most like like uh ec warren type deal the art is really well done on it um but why does the local scarecrow maker have access to this like cutting edge drug that stops people's hearts 
Who is this chick's dad? What was his powers? Why is this stuff inherited? What is her motivation? What is she, uh, what is his motivation? Does she say anything to him? Like, I don't know. There's some stuff that's not explained. I think if this was like two pages longer, it was, it would probably be the strongest thing in this entire issue. Um, that kind of leads me to like a big point about this book. I think that they would be very well served to split up stuff into a straight horror series, The Creeps, and then do another magazine that's more emulating the horror, sci-fi, fantasy, um, integration and the jungle adventure stuff like they hit on it all i think it'd be really nice if they instead of going bi-monthly they stayed quarterly and did another title that was just that and they sw it switched in between the two i just think that would be better that's a little nitpicky thing this is an awesome awesome magazine i cannot recommend it enough it is six bucks if you get on the warrants uh website you can pick up everything except for the first two issues at cover price i know i'm going to be having my local comic shop order all of this stuff it is awesome yeah you know the order probably i would have i would have done the order of the stories differently if it, it it read a little bit jilted a um, little bit jumpy to me i think that also has to do with the content of the stories which would again could be addressed by having another title but they're a smaller publishing company like it's the market is choked they're getting this shit out they're doing it right i cannot recommend it enough if you're into the warren stuff if you're into the ec stuff you deserve it to yourself and to warrant magazine to give this a shot um order it just do it pull the trigger on an issue i almost guarantee you if you actually really are into that stuff you will dig this very true to the feel everything so if you do pick this up make sure you get in the comments section let me know what you think of it if you didn't like it let me know why you didn't like it and if you did like it which i hope you do let me know what you liked most about it um let warrant know what you thought of it let them know you're picking it up uh they have a great letter section drop them a line let them know what you thought i have a feeling that uh, rich sala and the rest of the uh staff on this book will read that stuff will pay attention to what you're saying if it's intelligent and um and you're putting forth a good idea so go out check this out boils and ghouls cannot recommend it enough i hope you like this um, thanks so much for sticking with me make sure you hit that like button make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep up with all the crazy weekly crap that i come out with with these off the beaten racks and the page turners and the convoluted character corners and the history lessons and the audio books and all of that tons of fun stuff you want to keep up with that hit that subscribe button Thanks so much for sticking with me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, boils and ghouls, keep reading comics. Or, well, I guess in this case, you know, keep reading magazines. Definitely a magazine. But man, good enough. Comic magazine? I don't know. Whatever. Whatever it is, keep reading that.